In the previous lectures, we have seen what makes VCS clusters physically. In this lecture and the following lectures, we will see what is a logical view of VCS software. VCS is made of resources, services groups, cluster service group, cluster UUID, agents, and high availability daemon. We will talk about all these in upcoming lectures. In this lecture, we will talk about resources. The resources are hardware or software entities that make up the application. A hardware resource, for example, network interface card, IP address is a software resource. Similarly, we can have disk groups as well. Resources come into three types, on and off, which VCS engine can start on demand and they can shut it down as well. On only resources can be only started by the VCS. VCS cannot turn them off, for example, NFS daemon. Final type of resources is the persistent resources. The persistent resources cannot be controlled by VCS engine, for example, network interface card. In VCS, resources can depend on other resources. The dependencies tell them which resource will come online and how will they come online. In this example, you can see we have an application which requires a database and IP addresses. We also see multiple resources are listed, for example, disk group, file, NIC, and IP. In order to get the IP address, it is very crucial that your network interface card is up. Therefore, an IP resource depends on NIC resource. Similarly, the disk group until they are online, the file and database will not be available. If any of the underlying resource is not available, your application will not come online either. So resource dependency tree tells us which resources will be coming online in which order. Some resources, they may depend on multiple resources. Some, they cannot have any dependency. The better way to look at the resource dependency tree is from bottom to up. A resource which is at the bottom is known as a child resource. The upper resource is the parent of that child. So the parent will come online only if all its children are online. A service group is a virtual container that contains all the hardware and software resources. So in other words, once you combine multiple resources, they form a service group. These service groups in turn can control the hardware and software of the managed application as a single unit. Service groups comes into three categories as well. We have failover service groups, which can run only one at a time on a single node in a cluster. Parallel service group is the other type. Parallel service groups, as the name suggests, can run simultaneously on more than one systems in a cluster. Any application which does not cause the data corruption can be spanned under parallel service groups. Finally, we have hybrid service groups. These are the combination of the failover service groups and the parallel service groups. The hybrid service groups, they work as a failover service group in one node and as a parallel service group in the another node. They are slightly more complex to deploy and needs more attention to manage them. The cluster service group is a special purpose service group which contains the resource information which are required by the VCS component. Resources such as notifications and wide area connectors are used in global clusters. Cluster service group comes online on the first node whenever you turn on the cluster, whichever node transitions into the running state. The VCS engine discourages to the action of taking the group offline manually, so you should leave the cluster service group intact without touching it. Cluster UUID is a universally unique identifier. Whenever you install the VCS, the VCS generates an identifier. You can also supply your own UUID. One thing to remember is that once the UUID is assigned to a cluster, any node member which joins the cluster, they keep this information to them. Therefore, all nodes, they identify the cluster with this UUID. VCS agents are multi-threaded processes that provides the logic to manage resources. Each resource type which we have previously seen has a one agent associated to it. For example, an IP agent manages all IP resources. Agents, they use IMF or Intelligent Monitoring Framework to obtain the necessary information periodically and then they update to the VCS engine. VCS engine abstracts that information and takes the corrective actions. Agents can be classified into three types. The bundle agents are the agents which comes by default with the Veritas cluster. 
enterprise agents are agents which are developed by different vendors for example oracle or db2 custom agents can be developed by the vendor on demand or customers can develop them in house as well a high availability daemon or hat also known as vcs engine the vcs engine is responsible for building and running the cluster configuration it distributes the information when new node joins the cluster similarly whenever you issue any command vcs is what responds to your inputs you can find vcs configuration files under etc directory named as main.cf similarly if you want to check what agents are available you can navigate to etc vrts vcs conf and types.cf file that's all for this section in the next section we will go towards the practical part first we will set up the oracle virtual box environment and then we will set up two node cluster i will see you in the next lecture then thank you